So a few months ago, I was contacted by a woman on Facebook, and she told me that she had this oak table that she wanted me to have as long as I could come pick it up. Um, and I went over, and I, I got it, and this is what I ended up with. Um, and for a while, it just sat, and I wasn't sure what to build with it. Uh, but then I decided to build a chair. So this build actually started by going to uh, my local home center and going to the garden section and getting an outdoor uh, chair uh, cushion. And I built this pattern that you just saw there to fit that. So what I've done is I just traced my patterns out and I'm rough cutting everything on the base. All right, so we've got all our pieces rough cut, and I just want to take a minute to um, show you kind of how they're going to go together. So um, some of the pieces might not make sense right now, but um, like this here is your armrest. And then when we were cutting the front legs, see the back side of this wood is a little nasty. Um, so when I laminate them together, this is going to be what's on the inside. I'm still going to sand it and everything and make it nice and smooth. Um, but it's just probably not going to be as pretty as like this wood would be. Um, so the way they're cut is we have a front leg and a front leg, and when these sandwich together, that kind of nasty wood ends up on the inside. Okay, so we got the nice stuff on the outside. And then it's the same deal with the back legs. So you can really see it on that one. That's going to take a lot of sanding to get nice, you know, and there's some little holes and whatever, and you'll never see those once we have it all together. And that'll be the back leg. We're going to figure something else out to do with this armrest. Um, I just didn't have enough to be able to laminate this. So we're going to do something a little different. So I'm just sanding all the surfaces now, getting them uh, ready so I can start gluing these pieces together. Alright, so I let them set in the clamps for a day or so, and uh, now I've removed them. And what I'm doing here is I'm using duct tape. Normally I would use like a masking tape, but I was all out of it. Um, and I'm just temporarily gluing my pattern to that so I can use a flush trim bit and cut the uh, two larger faces to the correct shape. Now you could cut the ends with this also, um, but I find that you kind of get a lot of tear out and it's just easier to do on the table saw. And I'll show you how I do that in a minute here. I'm also using an activator on the super glue. It just makes it dry a little quicker. So this is the table saw jig. Um, I just made this real quick. And, and what I do is I set, uh, like right here, you see me setting the pattern in. And I'll just move these little tabs and nail them into position temporarily. And um, I can just, you know, trim all the pieces and just move through this quickly. Um, this would also be nice if I had a tapering jig, but I don't have one of those right now. All right, and here I'm using a, a chamfer bit just to put a slight chamfer on this edge, and I'm just slowly working at it, removing a little bit of material, material uh, especially on that end grain. It's, it's very difficult to cut that um, and get a clean cut. 
So I'm just taking my time moving up slowly and eventually I'm going to get it to where it's even, the top of the taper is even with the line where the two pieces are laminated together. So this is my last cut here. You can see that that taper stops right at the uh, point where the two boards meet and it's just going to help disguise that line a little bit. Alright, so originally my plan was not to use the domino joiner. I know that kind of gets a bad rep reputation with a lot of the DIYers. It's a, a tool that many people wouldn't buy because um, they are rather expensive. My original plan was to use some sort of doweling jig. I had actually ordered uh, an inexpensive one online and unfortunately it never showed up. We just got hit by a hurricane here and uh, apparently my package went missing somehow. Just don't be discouraged by the fact that I'm using the domino joiner. Um, there are many ways to do this, this joint here. All right, a little more sanding. Now I'm just using a 1 8 round over bit to round over all these edges. do the uh, bottom edge on the uh, with the round over bit but then I've got to use just some sandpaper to round over the rest of it Now I'm going to make the rails that attach each side of the uh, seat frame. It's kind of running out of the material that I planned on using. Um, so some of these pieces really weren't the nicest, but they do have a lot of character to them. And, um, you know, being that it is reclaimed wood, I don't mind uh, showing some of that character. purpose of this was never to build something that was absolutely perfect. It was uh, just to make use of some reclaimed material. All right, I'm just marking up my dominoes again. Uh, it's a little tricky. I had actually never used it uh, in this sort of vertical position that I have to do here. So this took me a little bit of time to figure out, but uh, once I figured out how to do it, it, it does move very quick. That's the nice thing about the domino. But again, something like a doweling jig would have been perfect here. Um, and uh, really, it probably would have been faster since they're just very easy to use. I just like to test fit everything. These here are going to be the bottom rails. Um, I only put two of them in and that kind of ended up being a problem because it didn't really support the cushion. Um, I, I don't ever show it on the video, but what I ended up doing was just adding a, a flat piece of plywood 
under there that um, will support the seat better. And I'll probably go back sometime down the road and add in a couple more rails. Now you guys are probably cringing as I'm getting glue on my table saw here, but it all wipes off easily. So I get everything clamped up, get the excess glue wiped off and set it to the side. Um, and now we're going to address the issue that I had. Um, so originally the plan was to double up everything that was with the legs, but I ran out of material. So what I've decided to do is um, put some sort of armrest on this portion. And this is just how I built those pieces. I'm just finding the taper on there quickly um, so I can match that taper to these armrest pieces. A little more sanding. I also used an eighth inch round over bit on all these edges here. Just some final sanding again, and then we're going to get back to using the domino. All right, so now both of those sides are dry. Um, just go back through, scrape some of that glue off. I like to use a card scraper just to start to remove a, a majority of it. I'll come back through the sander. The bottoms of these weren't absolutely perfect. Uh, so what I did was I just used my track saw. Uh, this is a really inexpensive one. And it's really a great tool. Uh, it's honestly probably one of, one of my favorite tools that I own. Um, but I'm just using that to square everything up, just taking a hair off the bottom. And then I'm just using this little hand plane just to uh, put a little chamfer on those edges. And now I'm just going to sand them smooth. So I'm just clamping these boards on so I can come up with a way to set this at the height that I wanted. Um, you know, off camera, I, I tested this just to make sure it was exactly where I wanted it. Um, and these uh, one by 12s that are, you know, actually 11 and a quarter inches happen to be perfect. So um, I'm just using screws to hold this for now. I'm going to put a couple screws in here. I'll put it on the floor, put a few more in. What I'm going to do is uh, loosen those up. I'll put some glue on. And then I'll just tighten the screws back up, and that's going to act as the clamp. This ended up working out really well. This thing is super solid. There's absolutely no rock at all to it. Um, I'm just really happy with how this thing is coming out. Just doing a little bit more sanding, just making sure that any of the rough edges are knocked off it. What I normally do is I'll just run my hand along and make sure nothing catches. Obviously, I had a million different options to go with for a finish, but I just decided to go with uh, plain old shellac. I'm really happy with how it came out. It's the first piece of furniture 
that I've uh, completely coated with shellac. Normally I would just use it as a sealer, but uh, this, this came out great. It goes on really good. Uh, one thing I can say, uh, it'll eat right through your foam brushes. Uh, and I found that it's actually better to use a rag. So I ended up doing that later on when I uh, put a couple extra coats on. I hope you all enjoyed this build as much as I did. This was a pretty big deal for me. This is the first chair that I've ever built, and it's actually the first chair I've ever owned. So uh, I'm really excited with it. If you learned something or you just enjoyed watching the build, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it if you guys would let me know what you think and leave any questions that you may have in the comment section. Thanks again, everybody. I'll be seeing you soon.